Welcome to Property Law 101. I'm Sarah Bronin, and I started this series to help you understand the basics of property law. So today we are talking about the second of four questions that we ask during this series, and that is acquiring property. We have talked in other videos in this series about how possession can be the means to show that you own something. Adverse possession is a legal doctrine that allows someone to acquire title to come to own real property by possessing it for a statutory period under certain conditions. Another video shows the elements of adverse possession, but essentially it, these elements, if shown, allow a trespasser to have rights on someone else's property. Now, why might the law reward trespassers by giving them title to property that they've trespassed upon? I'm going to run through a series of reasons that people have advanced to justify the doctrine of adverse possession. So one of those reasons is what Oliver Wendell Holmes called uh, the law providing psychological comfort. Uh, the psychological comfort to those who have gotten used to owning property. So this is the idea that someone who's been, who has been using property may have more at stake than someone who cares about the property so little that they have essentially abandoned it to the use of another. So at first, adverse possessors might view their property as a gain, as a windfall. But as they continue to use the property, they start to frame it as part of their assets. And it is this psychological shift that suggests that we should support the legal option of acquiring land by adverse possession for those people. Another thought is that at a very basic level, adverse possession encourages productive use of property. So we don't just want property owners sitting on their property and doing nothing, not even bothering to monitor it. Even if adverse possessors are breaking the law, they still, in theory, value the property more than their true owners. Stuart Sterk and others have advanced this view. Maybe somehow this is also intertwined with the idea of personhood discussed in another video. Uh, one, uh, the theory of personhood being the one advanced by Margaret Jane Radin, which suggests that property can be in, so intertwined with one's person that in some ways uh, that property takes on special meaning, especially when an adverse possessor is possessing a home. You can see that as time passes, they may have more and more personal connections to property. Perhaps another justification for adverse possession comes from Tom Merrill and Joseph Singer. They have said that adverse possession may be justified on moral grounds, on the principle that adverse possession protects someone's reliance interests on property. And then we should think about the efficiency rationales of adverse possession. It is a way to quiet title to property in a somewhat efficient way. We can use the adverse possession process to correct problems of lost evidence, uh, the fact that we might not know who owned the property. Adverse possession could help us allocate rights in those scenarios. Adverse possession can also clear away old or conflicting claims on title. It can do so in a way that is relatively cost effective because ultimately what it does is it reduces the potential for those claims. It also re could reduce the amount of time that people have to search backwards through title in order to clear up its marketability. So finally, from a much broader perspective, people have justified adverse possession on the grounds that it is a means to redistribute wealth from rich to poor. Some European countries like Scotland allow adverse possession fairly liberally. And the notion there is that the poor can possess property that the landlord doesn't even bother to monitor. In developing countries, 
adverse possession may take a different uh, tone and may be enacted for different reasons. But in general, by providing a mechanism for the poor to gain title, the theory is that you encourage investment in and their labor and ultimately very big picture, you shift wealth. So at the end of adverse possession, you get title. Do these rationales convince you that adverse possession has some merit or do they convince you that adverse possession is uh, a, a simply a land grab that allows squatters, trespassers, and others who disobey the law to get rights to something that uh, hardworking people have decided to, to ha have come to own, at least on a record basis? So check out the other videos on adverse possession, including limitations that the law has placed on adverse possession that somewhat limit the full extent of these justifications that we've just discussed. So I'm gonna leave it there. I would love to hear from you on Twitter or through my website, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again.